Welcome back everyone to another video with Scruffy Tales and in this video we will take a look at the Swedish battalion that Ukraine has put together that will soon see combat with the Russian invaders. The battalion made up of tanks and CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles, possibly even archers, uh, has been recently trained in Sweden by Swedish officers and uh, is uh, has been deployed back to Ukraine and is uh, ready to get stuck in with the enemy. I have yet to see uh, reports of uh, Swedish vehicles uh, in combat, but uh, yeah, before that happens, let's take a closer look at these vehicles. Sweden has promised Ukraine 10 STRV-122 main battle tanks and 51 STRF-90 vehicles as well as up to 12 Archer self-propelled howitzers, which amounts to one tank company, two IFV companies, and two to four self-propelled artillery companies, and a couple of support companies. All in all, this is one of Ukraine's heaviest, most capable, and most dangerous battalions. It has some of the best protection, the best firepower, and the most mobility. It can outmaneuver any Russian mechanized unit, and it can engage and outgun anything that Russia can throw at it. This is quite possibly Ukraine's most elite fighting unit in terms of equipment. This is an assault unit. These vehicles are not built for maneuver warfare. They are built and designed for full-on assaults. By the end of summer, Russia will remember that Swedish steel cuts deep. The STRV-122 was, throughout the 90s, the world's most advanced and capable main battle tank. Time has moved on, other versions of tanks have emerged, but it gives you an idea of what this is. A dangerous, capable and hard-hitting armored vehicle. The STRF-9040 is considered by many to be the world's best IFV, the peak of IFV development. Its main gun, a 40mm autocannon, can punch through Russian tanks. Its armor is on par with anything in the West, and it is superior in traversing difficult terrain. The Archer is a fast-moving, fast-firing, accurate self-propelled howitzer that can go from driving to stopping to firing three rounds to getting back on the move again in about a minute. This high mobility makes it difficult to combat them with counter-battery or even finding them. All combined in accordance with Swedish doctrine, and Ukraine has a highly mobile and extremely hard-hitting battalion. To top it off, the troops carried by the STRF-9040 will bring with them Swedish anti-tank weapons that are among the best in the world in dealing with tanks, armored vehicles, and bunkers. The M-Law has been destroying Russian tanks for over a year en masse. The 84 has been used by NATO countries for decades in combat. And the classic, legendary Carl Gustav recoilless rifle has seen combat in multiple wars and conflicts since the 50s, and has a track record spanning 60 years of destroying armor, defeating bunkers, pounding trenches, and obliterating infantry. And Ukraine will, following Swedish doctrine, provide them all to the dismount squads traveling in the STRF 9040. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure if Ukraine will add any Bandwein vehicles to the battalion, but Sweden and other nations have provided Ukraine with these vehicles, both older and newer models. These Swedish vehicles are unmatched in their ability to traverse rough and difficult terrain. They can cut through snow, sand, swamps, forests, rubble, you name it, it doesn't matter. The Swedish Bandwein can advance wherever it needs to go. This makes it perfect as a combat ambulance or for bringing in supplies to the front line. And also as a troop transport. A Bandwein can move where other heavier vehicles cannot, allowing infantry to quickly cross through terrain where other units cannot follow or cannot maneuver. Provide these soldiers with Enlaw, Kolgustov, or even Javelins, 
and you quickly realize how deadly a ban bang can be in a hit and run capacity. And if the battalion follows Swedish doctrine, then it will be supported by several ban bang vehicles. Interestingly, recently we found out that Russia has collected some general information about the Swedish vehicles and provided it to its soldiers on easy to read pamphlets. Concerning the STRV-122, we can read that Russia points out that it is one of the most heavily armored leopards in Ukraine. And what is really interesting is that Russia tells its soldiers that attacking a uh, STRV-122 from the front is more or less futile, both the hull or turret. They strongly suggest that an ATGM is used in this case. In other words, Russian tanks should stay away from a head-on fight with the Swedish STRV-122. They also mention that the smoke launchers can be used to fire fragmentation grenades. And considering the many videos we've seen of Ukraine rolling up to Russian trenches with their tanks and firing at point-blank range, I think there is a reason why Russia points out that the STRV-122 potentially could be armed with short-range grenade launchers. <laughs> I just realized that the dishwasher uh, was heard in the background. Anyway, uh, <laughs> concerning the STRF-9040, or CV-90, as it is known internationally, the Russian pamphlets points out that it can withstand 30mm autocannons to the front. An important point, since Russian autocannons are usually 30mm. It's almost as if the CV-90 was designed specifically to fight Russian vehicles. They also note that it lacks an ATGM, but at the same time point out that the main gun is powerful and can defeat T-62s at 500 meters and can also fire various projectiles that can defeat bunkers and trenches. Russia should know from history that Swedish troops have always relied on quality rather than numbers to defeat Russia in combat. From the age of skilled Viking warriors, to the elite Karelian musketeers, to the Jaegers of the Grafström raid of World War II, Sweden's concept of achieving victory has always relied on closing in on the enemy to point-blank range, despite gunpowder, despite being outnumbered, and there win the battle in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with axe or rapier or with bayonet and the Swedish vehicles now provided to Ukraine are no different. Swedish doctrine clearly puts emphasis on moving into point-blank range with tanks and armored vehicles fighting in the enemy line instead of at a distance. Ukraine has not only been trained in how the Swedish vehicles work, they have been trained, according to reports, in Swedish doctrine and tactics. A storm is coming. And Russia will remember that Swedish steel cuts deep. At the making of this video, Swedish vehicles have yet been used in combat as far as I know. But we must acknowledge that Swedish vehicles will be lost to uh, in enemy fire. It wouldn't surprise me if we will see up to 10 or 12 CV-90s destroyed this month. It will be bloody. But... The damage they will inflict will be ten times worse. Bayonet Po, Gopomarsh, Framot, Ukraine. Give them hell.